Growing up in Kentucky in a small town and being recruited by the University of Kentucky and playing for Adolph Rupp at Kentucky, uh, that had a profound influence on his life and his coaching style. Part of a Hall of Fame has the word fame. So, you know, stars, uh, you know, who, what's the biggest celebrity we can get and how do we uh, make a name in uh, things. Uh, but any time that it has a part of contribution to the entity, so this is the A Sun Hall of Fame, that uh, I personally don't think it would be complete without him. He presided over the merging of the New South Conference with the TAC when we added women's sports. Uh, you know, he was there when we launched TV uh, plans, uh, our first website. There was just so many things that changed uh, that uh, as far as an overall contribution, to the entity, uh, I don't think there's anybody that, that has given more over time than Bill Bibb. He exemplifies what a college coach is supposed to be. I understand now in 2016 that all these kids have their brand and they want to get to the next level and they have all these other things, but Coach Bibb did what college is supposed to do. First of all, he made sure we get, was educated, we graduated, he made sure we went to class. Second. He helped us develop as young men. You're supposed to grow up and develop. When you leave college, you're supposed to be a young man. He did that. And third, uh, we won as a team. Uh, we made it to the NCAA tournament. And for those of us who was good enough to play at a high level in Europe or the NBA, he was a good enough coach, a great coach, to get us there skill-wise. So he did everything that a college coach is supposed to do. He was hard-nosed, uh, you know, and I think the players respected him for that. My first relationship with Bill actually was play-by-play -play announcer for the Mercer Basketball Bears in 1970. I started that program, and when Bill came in 72 or 73 as, as an assistant coach to uh, Joe Dan, and then he became the head coach, and he and I would, we would spend a lot of time on the road together. I think coach is tough. You know, when I first met him, I was afraid to death of him. You know, I never had a coach that tall before that looked me eye to eye. And, uh, you know, we thought he was tough, thought he was mean. And after you got to know him, he was just an old softy. He had a rough exterior, but he was the nicest man. And, and, and whenever you were around, when Miss Linda, his wife was around, and we learned that, that, and we used to joke with Coach all the time, and he used to admit it. You know, he used to say, hey, I may run Mercer Athletic Department, but Linda runs home. What coaches do this day and time, they pamper kids. Bill didn't pamper anybody now. I know he left Sam Mitchell, the best player he ever coached at home one time, when we went to Baton, uh, not to Baton Rouge, but to Shreveport to play Centenary. He and Sam had some kind of altercation. But you talk to Sam Mitchell today, and Sam Mitchell has some of those same characteristics that Bill Bibb has. He knows hard-nosed basketball, he knows how to play it, and I think he learned a lot of it from Bill. Oh, Coach Bill kicked my team my junior year for two games. And I deserved it, because by my junior year, my ego had kind of got out of whack, and I had this big head, and I was the star of the team, and I was first team all conference, and i never forget Bobby Pope would call me and say, Coach Bill is thinking about bringing you on the trip, but, um, you know, he's got to do what's right. and. Uh, it was a tough decision because it could have cost us position in the conference and a lot of things, but uh, I learned from that. He, he was one of the founding fathers back in 1978 or 79, I think it was 78, in that September meeting. And he was one of the founding fathers of that, and he worked it all the way through from uh, leaving Mercer in 1989, I guess, went to Texas Arlington, and then came back, and I hope I played a little bit of a role in getting him back to the uh, conference. And he's he's been a great he was a great commissioner for the Atlantic Sun Conference. It was about basketball. It was about other sports. Football was not an issue with him. Not that he didn't like football, but our league at that particular time was a basketball league, and it still is today. I think tracing his contributions to the conference goes obviously all the way back to when it started. He was one of the uh, founding fathers, so to speak, of the old tech. And so it had to do with that, but the evolution of it that people don't realize, uh, he presided over the A-Sun, uh, which it became in 2001, we changed our name, that 
the, the next six, seven years, there was more change in college athletics as far as affiliations and new schools and changing conferences and that uh, his job became make sure that we're sustainable, that we have a conference. There's a lot of conferences that didn't make it through that period. And so I think his greatest contribution is he cared so much about it, he wasn't going to let it go away. And he was always two steps ahead of anybody else as to what we need to do. Well, I'm probably a little prejudiced, but you know, I don't think that anybody would be sitting in a room or having an Atlantic Sun function without the uh, involvement of my father. You know, here we are all these years later, what was the Transamerica Athletic Conference, now the Atlantic Sun, uh, all because of his efforts. So that alone should be reason for him to be in the A-Sun Hall of Fame. You couple that with the success he had as a basketball coach, you know, two-time coach of the year, took Mercer to their first ever conference championship, did it again four years later, uh, then migrated into administration and uh, became a very successful commissioner. Uh, his uh, recommendation of having the league televised games was uh, paramount. So when you look at all the accomplishments that he had, both as an administrator, as a coach, as a founding father of the conference, I don't think there's anybody more deserving of this honor than uh, my father, Bill Bitt.